interested in starting a microgreens farm but not sure where to start? By the end of this video, you're gonna know all the supplies and equipment that you need to start a basic microgreens farm. That way you can get started right away with your build. For the best microgreens content, be sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. That way you get notified every Tuesday when I post a new microgreens video at 2 p.m. Although I'm in a very big, nice urban farm now, I started off in a very small space with very basic equipment, just like everybody else. As my business grew, I actually didn't need much different supplies because I bought high quality equipment in the first place. You don't want anything that you buy in the beginning to be rendered useless as you grow. You wanna be investing in assets from the start. Because I did this, I ended up just needing to buy more of the same equipment I already had. So my assets just kept on growing as my business grew. One mistake I did make in the beginning was buying those normal flimsy 10 by 20 trays instead of buying the sturdy ones. And over time, my trays started breaking and I ended up having to throw them out. When I finally did make the switch over to the sturdy trays, I ended up being able to donate all my old ones to a local farm. So that was nice. But nevertheless, this was just wasted money because I wasn't investing in assets that were gonna last me a long time. And I wish I bought the better trays from the start. So don't make the same mistake I did. Okay, even though we're sticking to just the equipment basics, there's still a lot of items needed, so let's get right into it. First and most obvious is you're gonna need a microgreens rack like the ones you see behind me. This consists of the rack itself, lights that go on each shelf, zip ties to mount the lights to the shelf, a power strip, and an outlet timer. I'll let you know right now in the beginning of the video that most of the supplies and equipment I talk about today is gonna to be linked right below in the description so you can see exactly what I'm using here in my farm. Next is tables. You're gonna need one dirty table for making trays and one clean table for harvesting. I used two folding tables in the beginning which ended up doubling as my farmer's market tables. This is a great way to stay as lean as possible in the beginning by getting multiple uses out of your equipment. Trays. Like I mentioned in the beginning, it is in your best interest to buy the best trays on the market from the start. These are made by Bootstrap Farmer. They're extremely durable and high quality. They're going to last you forever and they don't break. They're amazing. You can slap them together. You can carry two at a time without them breaking. It's amazing. You're going to want the shallow trays, which are linked below in the description. In order to grow plants, you're gonna need some sort of growing medium. I prefer a potting mix like the ProMix MP Organic, that's what I use, but I see a lot of people also using Cocoa Coir and things like the grow pads. So try out some different materials, see which ones you like growing with best, and more importantly, see which ones your microgreens like growing in best. Water. Water is important and I don't recommend cutting any corners here. Do some basic plumbing or hire a plumber to run a line into your grow room. You're gonna need water in your farm space, so don't go making some inefficient watering system for yourself that's gonna end up making you crazy. Do it right and run a water line into your grow space that's attached to a garden hose with a garden hose nozzle so you can water and mist your trays. Ideally, you're gonna have a sink in your grow room as well for washing things like knives and your buckets and other equipment. Um, it's not completely necessary, but just make sure you have a sink at least nearby. I know this is a lot of equipment, but what's great is that all the stuff that you're buying in the beginning are actually business assets that you'll be able to use for a very long time as you grow. You're growing a business here and you will be putting all this equipment to good use. Let me know below in the comments what your number one favorite business purchase has been so far for your microgreens farm. You're going to need buckets if you intend on growing varieties that need to be pre-soaked for the germination process. I use paint strainer bags within the buckets which keep the seeds contained that I can just pull out of the buckets when it comes time to drain the water. And again, these are linked below in the description. Seeds, yes, these are very important if you're gonna be growing microgreens. I keep big bags of bulk seeds right in my main grow room and then I transfer them into smaller containers like buckets, bags, and jars so that way they're ready for use when I need them. You're also gonna need scales for weighing out seeds as well as during the harvesting process. For harvesting, you're also gonna need a knife. Um, I've seen other people use things like shears and scissors, but I highly recommend a knife and I'll actually link a video above me, that way you can learn why I prefer knife over everything else. Since we're growing microgreens in trays, it's also important to have a soil press, which I've also heard called um, a soil tamper. And what this does is it presses down the soil or your growing medium, so that way it's a flat surface 
so you can easily broadcast your seeds over that when you're planting your trays right before germination. If you don't feel like making one of these, you can actually also use another tray and just press the soil down with that to get a relatively flat surface as well. To keep things sanitary, you're also gonna need something like a sanitizing agent like Xerotol 2.0, which is what I use. This then gets diluted in a spray bottle so you can then spray down your supplies and equipment. So you're also gonna need a spray bottle. Gloves are also a must for sanitation and food handling purposes. I also like to use gloves to keep my hands clean when I'm doing things like making trays or watering the plants. You may not need refrigeration, but I highly suggest it. Some people harvest the same day that they deliver, so they don't really need refrigeration, but I prefer to harvest the day before deliveries. That way I can get the products nice and cold overnight in the fridge. You're going to need packaging for your products, often a few different sizes. And with packaging also comes labels, so you'll need those as well. I particularly love my sticker dispensers. It keeps my stickering process very efficient and dialed in. Aside from everything I already mentioned, you're also going to need to control your environment. A dehumidifier to control humidity, fans for airflow, and some sort of way to manage temperature in your farm, like an AC heat combo, which I show in my farm tour video. Okay, lastly, you need music. Studies show that plants love listening to music, especially certain types of music, and why not have the jams bumping while you're working? Okay, I guess this isn't totally necessary, but why not listen to music while you work? It'll keep you in the groove and will prevent you from going crazy from doing the repetitive tasks over and over again, which is just part of the microgreens business. I actually made a playlist of a bunch of my favorite music that I like to listen to in the farm. Um, and that's actually right on Spotify, so I'll put a link to that below in the description so you can listen to that playlist as well. It's called Seed Your Soul. Okay, that was probably a lot to take in and I'm sure you want a list of the supplies and equipment that I mentioned in this video. If you didn't already know, I actually have a blog right on my website, donnygreens.com, where I post my YouTube videos along with everything I said in the video below in the blog post so that way, just in case you wanna read the information from the video, instead of just watching or listening, you can do that. So if you prefer to read my microgreens content, you can just go right to my blog at donnygreens.com, click on blog at the top, and you'll see all my YouTube videos that you can click on, and then you'll see the transcription written out for you. And for this specific blog post, I'll be sure to list out all the equipment I mentioned along with links so you can have easy access to them. If you haven't seen my farm tour video, you can click it right below for a full walkthrough or click the other video if you wanna learn more about the ideal environmental conditions for your grow space. If you like this video, hit that like button below, subscribe to my channel, and be sure to share this video with your friends if you think it can help. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.